Looking out over the vast expanse of Great South Bay off Long Island, it's hard to imagine that clams, just about the size of your fist, could make a difference to improve the water quality. But that is exactly what scientists at the Nature Conservancy on Long Island hope they will do. About five years ago, they started to import hard clams from healthier waters, such as the North Shore of Long Island or the coast of Connecticut. And over the course of countless trips out to the bay, they have released three and a half million clams so far. With the right strategies and a little luck, these transplants will settle into their new home and, as the Nature Conservancy says, bring clam power to the bay as they filter its waters. My name is Chris Clapp. I'm an estuary specialist with the Nature Conservancy on Long Island. I'm Carl Abu. I am senior marine scientist at the Nature Conservancy on Long Island. Today, Chris and Carl are taking out about 30,000 clams. These are cherry stone size. Generally, the team releases larger adult clams, like cherry stones or the chowders that you would find in a cup of New England clam chowder. Early into their project, Chris and Carl found that big clams survived the move better than small clams. They also found a baby boom of new baby clams as these adults started spawning. One of the tricks to the team's success is how they drop the clams in the water. Just pick the bag up and dump the whole bag, then you just have a pile of clams sitting on the bottom. And you just kind of let them slowly roll out from the bags and into the water. They spread out a little bit more evenly instead of creating these big piles where not all of them get the opportunity to get into the ground. One reason that large adult clams survive better might be because they are less vulnerable to predators like birds. Still though, they can fall prey to surprising threats like conch shells or moon snails. So Chris and Carl remove broken dead clams from the bags because they might attract more predators. They give these castaways to fishermen back on the docks to use as bait. Restocking clams in Great South Bay would have seemed absurd a few decades ago. These waters were a haven for mollusks and supplied the entire nation with over half the hard clams they ate. There is still enough of these filter feeders to filter the entire bay every few days. But over-harvesting and pollution knocked down the clam numbers and they have not recovered since. Clams are an essential component of the bay, just like a vital organ in your body. Um, the bay needs the clams in order to be healthy. And if the imported clams settle into their new homes and reproduce enough to establish a sustainable population, it may even be time to open up parts of the sea bottom that the Nature Conservancy owns to clamors. Some fishermen claim that the catch from Great South Bay tastes better than from other regions. There's, there are people who could answer that question better than myself. <laughs> <laughs> I am the judge and uh, one of the judges in the Long Island clam chowder contest every winter. And so uh, I'd encourage you to come to Snapper Inn in February and taste lots of clam chowder. As Chris and Carl work to achieve a sustainable hard clam population in Great South Bay, they will continue relying on their regular volunteers to go out on the boat with them to stock. Sometimes they even recruit fishermen hanging around the dock, or the occasional celebrity. Isabella Rossellini was on board for one of the stocking excursions. As the stocking season is ending in June, the Nature Conservancy team anxiously waits for the annual population survey they will carry out later this year to give them an idea of how well the new clams on the block are doing. The true mark will be if the numbers of baby clams skyrocket. If they come near the numbers from the surveys of the past couple years, a whopping 300 million juvenile clams, it will be a good sign that clam power is on its way back to Great South Bay.